So in this video, I want to talk about OSC or open sound control. We've already talked about control voltage and how those signals are continuous. They come out as audio rate signals. Uh, they can either be some static level in DC coupled outputs here or some continuously varying signal. And that we plug these signals into our synthesizer to control all of the various parameters accessible from the panel. We've also taken a look at how we can take these same continuous signals and convert them to MIDI, which is a protocol that has 128 discrete steps. So we need a way to take this continuous signal and fit it into this stepped version of communicating information about music. What if we wanted to send information from devices like my iPhone or an iPad or something like a Kinect or even just listen to information coming in from a network uh, like the internet, somebody elsewhere in the world sending me information that they're going to use to modulate or alter my musical performance in some way. For this, we can use OSC. OSC is essentially a way of communicating information, control information over a network. A really great way to get started with this and begin playing with it is something called Touch OSC. It's a app that you can buy for your phone or your iPad. And what we're gonna do is I've got it set here on my phone. And so to make all of this work, we need to do some configuration. Essentially, we need to set up a few variables on the computer and the phone. There's a notion of ports and addresses, and at first these can feel a little confusing. But the easiest way to think about them is that when you send a letter to somebody, you need to know the building they live in and their apartment number. So the building they live in would be their address and the apartment number would be the port. What we're gonna do right now is assign an address and a port to the computer and likewise assign a separate address and port to the phone. Once we have those two locations, we can begin to talk back and forth between the two devices. So let's connect these two devices together. To start, make sure that both the phone and your computer are on the same network. If they're on the same network, they can begin talking to each other using these addresses and ports. And while that works, what I like to do is create a private network using my laptop. This ensures that the only things sending information back and forth are the phone and the computer. So to do that, you go to the top here on Mac under where your Wi-Fi is, and at the very bottom, you'll see the ability to create a network. I've already done that, and it pops up as Owen. Once you have a private network, we need to then connect your phone to it in the same way that you would connect to any other Wi-Fi network that you see available on your phone's list. Once the phone is connected to Owen, I need to do a few different things. The first thing is I go to system settings here on my laptop and I like to create a separate location where I can remove any other way of connecting or sending information except for Wi-Fi. I then go to advanced and under TCP IP, I set it manually to an address. Again, remember the address is just where this device lives. If I say OK and apply, this device now has a fixed address. And what I now need to do is similarly create a fixed address on my phone. What I can do is under Wi-Fi, I make sure I'm connected to Owen and then say static and give it an IP address. This address needs to be different than the one I set on my computer, but it's only the last number that needs to be different. So. Now that I have that set up, these two devices are aware of each other. They will be able to communicate back and forth. And I need to set up Touch OSC. So in the settings for Touch OSC, I can tell that it's communicating with my computer because it sees the address of my computer, this 01. I also need to set some ports. Remember, these are the, if the host or address is where these devices live, then these ports are the apartment numbers. So 8,000 is going to be the number I need on my computer and 9,000 would be if I'm sending information back to my phone. Now that we have all of this set up, let's take a look at Reactor and we'll see very quickly how we can send information back and forth and how easy it is to get this information controlling something like the Moog. So jumping back into Ableton here, I'm gonna open up the Reactor setup and the VST needs to be open so you can't close it once you close it like this, it'll stop receiving OSC. So we want to make sure it's open. We say File OSC Settings. And I'm actually already set this up, but if I 
go up here and make sure the port is set to 8,000. Remember, that's the, the address and location we said this would exist at. And I turn it on. It's now listening to the accelerometer data from my phone. What's interesting about OSC is I can give a name to the type of data that's coming in. So here it's called accelerometer XYZ, and I can send three values at the same time. So this is going to be the X, Y, and Z position somewhere between negative one and one. Now that I see this coming in, I need to add an OSC module inside here so that I can use this information. In Reactor, we just go under OSC and say receive. And because there's only one port, we need to say, first off, connect to the incoming. And again, this is the power of these being labeled. It'll give you a list of all information you've sent. So I'm gonna say, let's listen to this one. And I know that there's three pieces of information coming. So let's make three ports. And in fact, I'll name them X, Y, Z, but you could name them anything you'd like. And now I have access to the information coming from my phone. What I'm gonna do here is use this mix CV module again. And I'm gonna take in the X and I'm gonna send this as the second value here. And I'm gonna take the pitch output from my pitch CV module, and I'm gonna send these out. This will be port eight, but remember that on the MOTU, port eight is actually port six here. So I'll, again, I'm gonna use this to control the cutoff. And I'll go back to the panel here now, and we can see that if I turn up the input value here, as I rotate my phone, we should begin to see new values come in. So I should be able to use this to control the cutoff frequency of the Moog. So I'm gonna move over here and mute the other VST, turn up the volume of the Moog and play the sequence again. And I have to turn up the output here. And now if I turn it up, we should... So I'm now controlling the cutoff of the Moog using my phone. What's much more interesting though, is if I go back to our earlier idea of using an LFO, something like this basic LFO here, and I use the OSC as a modulation source on the LFO itself. So now I'm gonna take this instead and use that to modulate my cutoff. And what I'll do is go in here and say, listen to modulation coming in from here and use that to control the frequency of my LFO. And we can see here that there the LFO is going back and forth. And if I tilt, it slows down. And then here it speeds up. So let's see what that sounds like. So we started playing. And again, because of this mixer, if that's too aggressive, I can kind of turn it down and maybe I don't want it to go lower than it did. So I'm gonna clip it so it won't go lower. Now it'll only go higher. So you can see very quickly, you have a lot of control for mixing and matching. And imagine taking this now, this accelerometer or something like a Kinect and capturing motion data or a dancer or taking in streams of data from somebody else in a whole nother room somewhere else entirely that is streaming information to you, doing these sort of network performances from remote locations, all sending information in and controlling each other's hardware and synthesizers. This is very exciting, very powerful, and now completes this loop where you have the ability to send continuous voltage, you have the ability to take in MIDI information, and you have the ability to send information and receive information over a network and all of that can be routed through your software to then control your hardware devices. We now have the ability to create as many virtual modulators as we would like and connect them to our hardware synthesizers, our Eurorack modules, or any other signal we would like to use to control parameters on a synthesizer. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn how to build some of these synthesizers yourself, take my course on Cadenza Sound Synthesis Using Reactor. We'll take a look at the history of synthesizers in the 20th century, as well as techniques like subtractive synthesis, granular synthesis, drum synthesis, and even building your own sequencers and vocoders.